writing for the Lord is like nothing else because you are telling these real, sacred, meaningful stories that could actually change somebody's life. And, and sometimes you get so caught up in getting the interviews, getting it done, Lord, how do you want the story to look, and you know, that you forget the impact it could have. Not because of your great talent and ability, because the Lord doesn't use any of us because of our great talent and ability, but because it's about Him, and it's about what He's doing. And to do that, you have to have a strong relationship with the Lord, because you have to be led by the Holy Spirit. And I'm always reminded of that, <laughs> because it's easy, once you've been doing this for 20 years, to be like, oh, I got it. I know what I'm doing. And the Lord is always reminding me, Christmas, you need to be listening to me. You need to be seeking me. You need to be relying on me. And so as I look at you, I don't know why the Lord brought you here, but he knows why. And he has a plan for each of your lives. We know that. And something about this drew you here. And so I'm excited for you, for what the Lord has for you. And it's such a privilege. I meet some of the most amazing people to interview you know, to interview someone who moved to Cambodia and started an orphanage for children to get them off the street and to share Jesus with them. And they, they were sold at a brothel. Now they're living in a Christian orphanage and they know Jesus and they know, go, and they know God is their father. It's such a privilege. I cry so many times when I'm interviewed. Try not to let the other person know I'm crying, but I, because these are real stories of lives who are changed. And that's what we're talking about. And that's what the magazine is for. And um, Tom has always been very solid on that. We're not here to make this big church look good. We're not here to make this pastor look good. We're not here to just sell magazines, but we're here to tell the stories of what the Lord is doing in the world. That's our calling. That's our job. And the more time goes on, like with things that are happening in the world and even things that are happening in our movement, it's really easy to see why the Lord set this ministry up because we are kind of reminding people of why we're here. We are here to share the gospel. We are here to grow closer to Jesus. We are here to live for God. And he will meet us there and work through us and do all this amazing stuff. And these are the last days and we need to be about his business. And so that's our heart. That's always been the heart of the magazine. And as long as I've known Tom, it's never been about anything else. And it's a ministry. So it's not something to do just because you're bored or just because you think it'll be fun because there's a lot of warfare that goes along with any ministry, any, you name it, right? But just to kind of check, where is my walk with the Lord? You know, am I, am I walking with Jesus? Am I following him? Um, am I led by him? Am I led by the Holy Spirit? Could I write a story about what God's doing um, and let be led by the Lord in that. And, and maybe that sounds intimidating. Like, I don't know what that would be like. We'll talk about that. It's fine. Don't be intimidated. But just you have to be a mature believer, not perfect, but really serious about your walk with the Lord to work for the magazine, to write for the magazine. Because you're kind of, you have to use so much judgment and you have to use so much discernment and you have to really, Lord, what is your heart here? What? What do you see? Like, here's the story of these orphans. Like, what's your heart? Oh, here's the story about Guatemala. I don't know anything about Guatemala. What do you want the readers to know about Guatemala? You know, what? So, so it's definitely a calling. I guess I would just encourage you in that. It's a calling. It's a ministry. And sometimes we don't really get to see the fruit of it. You know, some ministries are different. Like, you get to lead someone to Christ. You know, you get to look at someone's face and see the light come on for them and see them, like, be encouraged. We don't get to see the readers' faces, but we've gotten a few letters, you know. We got a letter from a prisoner, and he said, I just want you to know that when I got to the cell, there was a pillow and a blanket and a Calvary Shuffle magazine. I don't know even, we didn't even know how that magazine got in there. Some faithful person took it and put it there. And then he, it really comforted him, and then he ended up giving his life to Christ in his cell with the magazine. And that's just like, what? So we're just trying to be faithful, and, um, and that's like kind of the vision for the magazine. So if you look at your little packet, everyone should have one of these. If you don't have one, raise your hand, and we'll get one to you. And, um, and everyone should also have two issues of the magazine, issue 74 and 75. These are our last two issues. And they're kind of going to serve as our textbooks. 
because I'm, I'm a very practical, like, yes, we can talk about theory and all that stuff, but I'm very practical, like, this is what it looks like, and this is what we're talking about. And I want you to feel free to write on these. I want you to feel free to dog ear the pages. I want you to feel free to just, these are yours, and really consume them, really look at them, really study them, really analyze them. And we're going to talk about um, different types of stories, um, which sounds maybe kind of boring, but you really need to understand a lot about, you can read something, but we're going to pick it apart a little bit. We're going to say, why is this written this way? What is the um, characteristics of this? What do you need to make sure you have in those? So, um, so there's our schedule on the first page. This is basically what we're going to talk about. If I feel like we have time to add more stuff, I was going to see how the class goes and how much we can squeeze in, because I'm I'm probably going to overload you with information. So that's why I printed all this out so you could take it home. And we're going to, we're recording it so you can even watch it again if you're that kind of a learner, because mm -hmm. everyone learns differently. So today, we might get to all these things. The Calvary Chapel Distinctives, I'm on page two. Calvary Chapel Distinctives, our vision and backstory, which now you already know a lot of that. Types of stories, what is a lead and a nut graph? And you're going to learn some fun terms in here, so don't be intimidated. Uh, four types of leads, uh, showing versus telling. So let's go ahead and get started on page three. Um, for the sake of time, why don't you guys just read this page silently to yourselves. And what this is, I just was aware that not everybody knows what Calvary Chapel even is. And Calvary Chapel, we don't believe that we are the only right and good kind of church in the world. No, we don't. But you do, because this is a Calvary Chapel magazine and every story we write has something to do with Calvary Chapel, you really should know what our beliefs are. You really should know what makes us unique. And there's this thing called the distinctives, the Calvary Chapel distinctives. And this just says, these are some of our core things that are distinct about us. Now, obviously, we believe in Jesus Christ. Obviously, we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that the Bible is the Word of God. Like, that stuff is is considered a given, so I, that's not even in here. <laughs> so you might be like, where's Jesus? I don't see. But, um, so, but I tried to, this is an entire book summarized for you in one page, so <laughs> keep in mind it's really short. But go ahead and read this. So Calvary Chapel emphasizes verse by verse Bible teaching. And we believe that every single page of the Bible is inspired by God and that sh it should be taught to the church and that um, that's one of the most important distinctives of Calvary Chapel. Um, we also believe in the work of the Holy Spirit, but we believe that it should be manifested in a very biblical way. So everything that we do, we want to rely on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, um, and we believe in the gifts of the Spirit, but that's not our focus. Our focus is the Lord, Jesus Christ, growing. Um, uh, we also believe in grace, um, that as we have received mercy and grace from the Lord, we need to extend that to others and have compassion uh, and come from a place of grace rather than legalism. The supremacy of love is really important, and I think a lot of people were drawn to the love that Pastor Chuck Smith, who was the founder of Calvary Chapel in 1965 in Costa Mesa, California, um, he was really known for that, for his love and his grace and his focus on the Word of God. And so if you're going to be a writer for Calvary Chapel, you really should understand the things that are important to this movement, the things that have defined us, because those things need to be adhered to in the stories. We don't ever want to have anything that's going to contradict the distinctives in the articles. Okay, let's go on to page four. And if you do, if the Lord does lead you and you do decide to write for us, I just would get a copy of the Calvary Chapel Distinctives booklet. It's very short, and it's actually really refreshing reading. I remember thinking, oh, this is going to be dry. It's not. It's just really refreshing. So our vision is that God is living and active in our lives, and we are just trying to show this truth through testimonies of real men and women who have been transformed by the Lord. And we're trying to show that changed life. We're trying to show that testimony. Now, sometimes we'll have an article that's uh, like a helpful, like marriage, like uh, help for your marriage or youth ministry and things like that. But it's always for the purpose of helping someone to put that into action in their own life. On the very bottom, where it says volunteer opportunities, we don't just need writers. I mean, we're a ministry and we do all kinds of things. So 
transcribing, that just means typing something that's uh, recorded, transcribing audio or video interviews, online research, article writing, editing, website development, if there's some of you out there who've done this, layout, we work in Adobe InDesign, uh, marketing, if some of you are good with people or you're good with marketing or social media, talk, talk to us because there's only, we only have like five or six people on our staff and we're all so busy that we, we know that we need to do more marketing and more social, we just don't have time. Um, so if you're gifted in, in that kind of thing, uh, sponsorships, if you've ever sold ads before or you have some interest in that. Um, and then we have all kinds of th things on the side, creating brochures, correspondence, office assistant, shipping. Um, there's just a lot of opportunities, especially if you live here. Uh, next page. All right, let's talk about types of stories. And we'll take a break in about seven minutes or so. So go ahead and pull out your magazines. And on the first, first or second page, you're gonna see the table of contents. So I just wanted to kind of introduce you to the plethora of possibilities of all the different kinds of stories and kinds of writing that you're gonna find in the magazine. Um, so on our little list here on page five, mission trips or overseas works. It's funny because 20 something years ago, 90% of the magazine was about missions. Mm -hmm. It was all mission stories, it was all overseas things. But things have changed and shifted a little and we found a lot more churches in the states were like, can you tell us stuff about outreaches here and how we can reach out to our communities and just articles to help people grow. And so it's changed a little. Now we have just a few um, stories about mission trips or missions overseas work and we have a lot more that could be helpful for the general reader. Then we have stateside Calvary Chapel Ministries. So this could be recovery ministries like U-Turn, where they help with drug and alcohol recovery and bringing people to Christ, local outreaches to the homeless or the lost, or there is a wonderful article. If you look, um, issue 74, Cal it says tw page 20, Calvary Chapel, Delaware County. This was such a wonderful story to write because these people are on fire for the Lord and they just want to show his love mm -hmm. all over. They're in sort of the Philadelphia area. They're kind of west of Philly. And they, uh, they had homeless ministries and after school for uh, you know, low income children and adult literacy <laughs> ministries. And uh, they would even take a mission trip to the Bronx every summer and work with kids from a uh, really poor neighborhood. and. For the whole, for like the whole, the, this one ministry did it for the whole summer, and they would come and do a week, and just it was just a wonderful article to write, and it was a lot of work because you had to talk to somebody from every one of these ministries and outreaches that they did to understand how did God start this? If you're going to minister to the homeless, what do you really need to? What needs to be your heart? What needs to be your attitude? What's what's a wrong opinion that sometimes people might have about the homeless that's going to cloud their ability to reach them? And so. That was a wonderful story, and I think it was a really useful story for anyone, just because it was a lot about how the everyday person doesn't have to be the pastor, doesn't have to be the assistant pastor, but the everyday person, the Lord can use them to start a ministry, to share the gospel, to feed a, a homeless person, to help someone find some clothes. You know, it just, just a beautiful story, so I would definitely read that one um, uh, sometime before the next class. And then, we have something that we call church features, and that's where we are looking at what God is doing at a Calvary Chapel in the U.S. And we try to, it's a challenge for the writer to find a unique angle every time we do a church feature. Because a lot of churches do the same stuff. They have a BBS, they have children's ministry, they have, you know, Sunday morning service. And so we're, that's where you really have to do a lot of researching and listening and digging to find what is the Lord doing in this fellowship that is unique, that is, could be an instructive example for other fellowships. And so you always try to tap into, because every body is unique. You know, every Calvary has a different culture, every Calvary has a different heartbeat, and so tapping into that can be challenging. Um, personal testimonies, we had a really cool one in this last issue, uh, issue 75, page 47. This lady, 
The way we found her was her daughter is Irma Presley. She brought her up front at an East Coast Pastors Wives conference and said, I just want you guys to meet my mom because she impacted my faith and my walk with the Lord. And this lady grew up in Nazi Germany and her mom was a Christian. And when Hitler would come on the radio saying all this stuff, she'd say, don't listen to him. We don't, we don't listen to that man in this house. He's evil and we don't agree with him. And just, I never really heard a story like that. And so this is just kind of her story of how she found Christ. And uh, they can be really powerful, those personal testimonies. And we usually try to do someone who's not a pastor, who's probably not going to be quoted in a story and is not a leader who's going to be in the spotlight, but just an everyday person who has an amazing story of coming to Christ. And then we'll do topical ministry features. One of these, we had a chaplain story. It was the last issue. Last issue. So, so we had, um, page is on. Chaplain, page 42 of the same issue. This was a neat story because we really saw the value of this for so many reasons because Oh my goodness, all the disasters that have been going on in the last few years, and there's so many people hurting, and this is an amazing ministry where the Billy Graham Association will train men and women to go out to these disasters and be there with the victims, like the day or the next day or the next day, right when people are hurting, right when it's raw, right when they need someone to pray for them or to give them a hug or to listen to them or tell them God loves you. And it was a story that we hope will inspire people who aren't already in full-time ministry, busy doing stuff like that. Maybe this is their calling. You know, maybe this is their calling to go and get this training. Uh, difficult issues. Oh my goodness, these have gotten more needful. I think in the last few years, we we've had articles about um, abortion, gender confusion, drug addiction, pornography. Um, and the Lord has something to say about all these things. And the cool thing is that the Lord is working in all these things. And a lot of times believers don't know what to, I don't know what to say about that. I don't know what to think about that. And how the Lord, he's just right there. You know, gender confusion is not intimidating to the Lord. He's fine. He's right there. He loves them. He has a word for them. He has hope. Uh, drug addiction, it's not too much for the Lord. He does it every day. And I love those kind of stories because I just wonder, who is this for? Who needs to hear this story? Um, world issues news, oh my goodness, we've had, people are fleeing for their lives from ISIS, and it's as crazy as you can imagine, and um, there was like a news team out in this field at night, and it was showing all these women and children, and they're shivering in the cold, and they don't have any water or food or shelter, and these, this like um, Austrian teacher, he saw this, and he was like, we gotta go, we gotta go out there, that's like an hour away. And so he called a couple other teachers and students and they went in, in, the, in the night with food and water and blankets, just what they could throw in their car and they went and they just started ministering to people. And it was just, just showed you how when the Lord says go, you just go. And if there's someone hurting and he's saying, you go get them, you go help them, just to trust him and just step out and how then all these Muslims started getting saved. You know, and it's like, whoa, and it, when God's in charge, you don't know what's going to happen. But it was, so even though in the world's eyes, oh, the refugee crisis is awful, it's terrible, it is awful and terrible, but the Lord's there, and he's working in it, and he's doing his thing. And so we're on deadline, which if you work for us, you'll learn what that means. <laughs> Crazy time. <laughs> We're on deadline. We're trying to get everything done. And then there's this horrible tragedy in Las Vegas. This guy shoots all these people, and people are just reeling from this. And um, Tom just really felt like, we need to cover this. I'm, we need to find out, are Christians going out there? Are they ministering to people? What's happening? So we started calling all the Calvary chapels anywhere near this. And we found out that, yes, you know, several of them, just they just mobilized. They just went out there and started ministering to people. And so... Then we found out that a girl got saved. One of the ladies, one of the girls who got shot at the concert ended up, she was in the hospital for a week, she was getting her surgeries on her arm, and then she ends up at a Calvary Chapel in Las Vegas, and she ends up giving her life to Christ a week after being shot at this concert. And it had just happened. And so as a, as a Christian, you know, you're thinking, this poor girl, like, we want to be very gentle we want to be very careful how we ask her to relive this for us because she doesn't even know who Calvary Java Magazine is and 
what we're all about and that we're not like just looking for a front page story and so that was that was one where we really had to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit I had to be super patient and just I was texting her to try to figure out is she up to this is she mentally like is she emotionally and finally the day before I think that we had to have this story finished she talked to me and she told me everything I didn't ask where did you get shot or how did it I just said you want to tell me your story and she just told us and I think it even helped her to connect God protected me he protected me when this happened when this happened when this happened and and it really helped her I think to see God's hand and a lot of times you'd be surprised how often the Lord's using that interview for something even bigger than a story and I have some little think about it questions for you scattered throughout these pages. And one is, which types of stories seem most appealing to you? Because we're all different and some of us gravitate more towards one type of story or another. And then um, later in your own time, find three Calvary Chapel articles and determine which type they are. So you're gonna have to look at a story and start picking it apart to say, what's going on here? Is this a testimony story? Is this a tragedy story? Is this a story about a ministry? Um, what is the writer doing here? What is the purpose of this article? Where is it going? So, um, you know, you kind of might get a little ruined for just being able to just read something without thinking about it too much, but that's all right. Um, and if you go on our website, you're going to find, um, you know, CalvaryChapelMagazine.org. And if you go all the way to the right, and I say that because on some screens, you won't see it right away. You'll have to, like, make your screen go over all the way. So all the way on the right, you're going to see this word archive at the top. And if you click on that, then you can search the archives, and you can search for, are you interested in a certain country? What appeals to you? I mean, what's your passion? Look up stories about that.